Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we're talking about how X399, AMD's enthusiast platform, is an absolute mess right now. It really, really is. So before you AMD fans absolutely explode at me and call me an Intel shill or whatever else you guys like to call me, uh, my personal CPU is a 1950X and I quite enjoy it. Uh, I've been recommending Ryzen CPUs left and right and I was on the X99 platform before this which was an absolute mess as well at launch and some issues they never, it never really got right like the USB issues. So it's got nothing to do with that. I'm being very objective and these are things that I think uh, even you AMD fans really should know about if you're thinking about going to X399. Um, just to keep in mind. So the first thing, and I apologize if the fans are ramping um, up and down on the uh, on my rig behind me because I've tried to set these fans to silent on the Gaming 7 and for some reason they just keep going up and down so I don't know what's going on there. So the first thing I want to talk about, and we'll talk about some of the solutions I've found as well, is uh, installing the CPU. So you might think, well Kevin, what, what, what has that got to do with it? So if you do not know with Threadripper, I'm, I'm sure most of you guys know if you're watching this video, you, you have to screw it in. They don't have the sort of like retention arms like you do on the uh, Intel CPUs or anything like that or even you know the, the X370s and B350s. You actually have to uh, screw this in. And that's fine, you know, this is it's not really a big deal, there's only three screws there, it'd be pretty hard to screw it up. Oh god, that came out wrong, but you guys know what I mean, I wasn't trying to be punny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so the issue is that I've found, and that a lot of people have been complaining about online, is the fact that the, the so, so you put in the guide, you have the, the Threadripper and the orange sort of carrier, and you slide it into uh, the sort of, the, the carrier on the motherboard. And then you have this metal plate here, as you guys can see. And then you push this down, and then you screw in this top one, and then you do the bottom two. So basically the problem people were having, and what I had, because I have the Gigabyte, that's the Aorus Gaming 7 in my system right now. This is the uh, MSI Gaming Pro Carbon X, uh, X399. So with the Gigabyte board behind me, when yesterday when I was installing it, I put the CPU in because it wasn't a problem at all on this MSI board. It was just fine. Slipped it in, everything screwed in very, very easily. No worries at all. But with the Gigabyte board, I put it in and I just could not get this top one threaded no matter what I was doing. And I, I, I used to work in the automotive field, so it's not just me being useless with tools or anything like that. I've worked on thousands of cars. Um, the thing was it just wouldn't thread no matter what I could do I had to take it out of my case lay it down on my desk put my left hand on it pushing down as hard as I possibly could on here and then using the tool to install it and only then but I had to exert a lot of pressure a lot more than I was comfortable with uh, to get that to work uh, and lots of other people had the same problem with them taking hours for it to install so what I figured out is it seems to be where the socket was manufactured because the main people having this problem are the people who bought the Gigabyte, the Aorus boards like the one in my rig behind me and the people running the ASUS Zenith boards whereas the people buying the MSI boards don't seem to be having that problem at all and I think I figured it out if you look on the sockets on the ASUS board or the Gigabyte board it says Foxconn where on the MSI board it says LOTS or Lotez or you know something like that anyways it's a different manufacturer and I think that's where it's coming from because if I feel the sort of retention plates on both of them it's way looser on the Foxconn one there's like way more side to side flex uh, so yeah as far as if you guys have that gigabyte board or the Asus one you're having this problem the only thing I've seen but um, take this with a big <laughs> grain of salt is people saying to install the CPU without the orange uh, uh, bracket around the orange carrier around it. Now I have not personally tried that, so you know maybe do your research on it, give it a go, but but be very very careful. So that's one issue a lot of people have been having. The second issue is uh, on the debug reader. You may be getting the CO code. 
uh, or C zero code. And that seems to be very, very common. I had that problem as well. And it causes hang if you do a soft restart. So that is if you go to restart from uh, BIOS or, or anything like that, or just restart from Windows, your computer will start to boot. Then uh, down the bottom here on your readout, you'll get the C0 code and it will just sit black screen, nothing will happen. You have to physically press your restart button, do a hard reset, and then you'll get in. Even, you know, even if you just set something in BIOS and click save and reset, it'll get stuck. Now, uh, the first thing a lot of people said with that one was to make sure that your CPU is uh, seated correctly and that your memory is pushed in properly. But pretty much everybody does that. Again, this is the enthusiast platform. The people that are you know, forking out the dollars to get onto this platform, I would expect know what they're doing uh, as far as computers go. I would expect them to be enthusiasts. See, you, it would be very unlikely, I think, that they would install something wrong. But that's the first thing you should try anyways, uh, just in case. After that, it, it, everyone just doesn't really know what to do. I was having that issue big time with this MSI motherboard. I reseat the CPU, reseated the CPU, and you know, moved the memory around, made sure it was installed correctly, everything like that. And it still did it. The only thing that fixed it was when I went up to the latest uh, 1.50 BIOS and that completely fixed the issue. I didn't see it anymore after that. I haven't had the issue since then. So I think maybe that is just something that needs to be fixed with a BIOS update. Uh, maybe running different types of memory. I did try G skill memory with this and it didn't change it at all. But yeah, it could be my, you know, maybe something to do with memory. But I think mainly it's just a BIOS issue and you should see it go away uh, once BIOS updates come out. The second is a memory issue. And this is something I've had with the uh, Gigabyte board behind me. So the MSI board was fine. I ran all four six of my memory in it, no worries at all. You know, absolutely perfect. But the Gigabyte board, when I was running it, with my Corsair Dominator Platinum memory here, this memory right here, uh, it only used two sticks. I'm not sure if you can see inside my rig right now, but it only has two sticks. It's only running in dual channel instead of quad channel because I have four of these sticks. So it should be running in quad channel. But it just won't do it. If I put the quad channel memory in, I get a blue screen, and it just will not, <laughs> will not boot no matter what. Um, it can't even get into Windows. It just comes up with all these sort of like memory-related issues. And I did try some G skill memory with it as well, uh, Trident Z, and I still had the same problem. And I'm not the only one as well, um, as I'll show you. This is a clip from uh, Brian from Tech Yes City's uh, Threadripper build video. So we've now set up the Cougar and we've got PUBG in the background running at 4K high settings with the 1080 Ti. However, one problem I did come into was that the LED Vengeance memory, I had to actually pull two sticks of this out of the Gaming 7 Aorus X399 motherboard because the compatibility issues at the moment this is an infant motherboard it's in its infant stages so it will need a bios update to bring out the full four sticks of uh, 16 gigabytes of memory to get 64 in total so yeah you can see that brian who's a good friend of mine uh he had the same problem and i talked to him later on skype about it and yeah he actually had the same problem as me so that's interesting too again i think it's something that could be to do with a you know a bios update would fix but it seems to be an issue on this gigabyte board i have heard about people having them on other boards but as of right now the uh, msi board here in that department anyway was just fine and i didn't seem to have that issue but one issue i did have with this msi board was that before it wasn't running at the stock speeds even if you put the 1950x in and you tried to run this at its stock frequency uh it would just black screen now, if you're having that trouble, I would say definitely update the BIOS because since I've been on the 1.50 BIOS on the MSI board, that issue has been fixed. However, if you're still having that problem, one thing I found was that if you disable the C states, it seems to make it go away. If that doesn't work, then just disable a core performance boost. Uh, that will limit your CPU in terms of the clock speed. It'll just sit just at its base clock, so 3.4 GHz for the 1950X. But it'll run properly and you will it'll you know stop the black screening issue not really what you want but it'll get you by it's kind of like running your uh, cpu in safe mode but that's something you can do so yeah if you're having that trouble uh, definitely update your bias as you should with uh, any motherboard um but you know if it's still persisting then try those two things and they should figure uh, help figure it out i think it's something to do with it over because i would see the core voltage going up quite high 
uh, of course, once you disable the core performance boost, it you know brings the voltage down quite dramatically because it's not trying to uh, boost or turbo the CPU up to like 4.1 gigahertz. So that's uh, one way you can get around it. And the last issue I want to talk about is Windows uh, issues. So quite a few people have been having that with X399. That is when you go to install Windows or you're uh, just trying to boot into Windows, you will have some sort of issue with this it brings for some reason it's it's getting very excited even though it's sitting at idle uh, the fans are just out of control maybe that's another thing oh, it's minor uh but yeah so so when you're trying to go into windows it will just have a hernia and it just won't go in you'll get all those zero x uh you know codes and things like that saying all different things now the main uh way to fix this i found when you're installing Windows is make sure every other drive aside from the drive you're obviously wanting to install Windows on is disconnected entirely. That's the first thing I would do if you're installing Windows. If you're just trying to boot to Windows like I am and it's doing the weird thing where it can't find Windows or it's trying to boot off like an SSD that doesn't have it, again just disable, uh, disconnect those uh, drives and then it seems to fix it. This was a big issue that I was having, you know, every like third or fourth time my uh, computer would boot, it was doing it with the MSI board. Uh, it just couldn't find Windows. It was trying to boot off my other SSD and other funny things like that. It was just being really strange. After the latest BIOS update though, it seemed to be fixed and I would imagine that'll be the same for the other manufacturers, the uh, ASUS and Gigabyte boards and the ASRock boards. If you're having that trouble also, um, just wait, it should be fixed in an upcoming BIOS update. So there we have it guys, that brings us to the end of this video, but I want to leave it with one thing. If you have an X399 motherboard, uh, please let me know in the comment section down below what issues you've been having and what uh, fixes you might have found to fix some of those issues you know to do with the different things i'd really like to know i want this to be a discussion to help the people out there who maybe have bought an x399 motherboard they want to get on this high-end platform this enthusiast platform but they're having a bit of trouble because i think honestly the the platform itself will be solid once these things are sorted this msi board is actually has some really really good features to it honestly i think it's going to be a very good platform and this board will be excellent as well uh once the issues are sorted it'll be very very good but as of right now it is quite frustrating with all these different issues so let's help each other out i hope this video was informative as well and helped you understand some of the things so let's have a discussion in the comment section down below i'm going to check out all the replies you guys give and i because i find this very very interesting hopefully we can work together and figure out some of these issues but yeah um hopefully this video may have cleared a few things up for you guys all right thank you all for watching uh, please subscribe to my channel, Tech Showdown, if you like these types of videos and you want to see more. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.